Hello and welcome to another maths video. Today we are talking about standard deviation. Um, the big bad mathematical concept that it is. Um, I want to talk about the theory of standard deviation in this video. Uh, if you would like to look at calculating it, um, for those of you who I teach, uh, you can get a Word document on iLearn. You can just go and download it and have a look. and It will step you through the process. Uh, I've also got slides there that step you through the process as well. Um, but different calculators are different, so that's one relevant for my students. Uh, your calculator will be different. Uh, please consult your calculator to work out how you can work out standard deviation. All right, so what it is, standard deviation is a mathematical distance. Okay, and it's important we look at it as a distance. Um, it's also a measure of spread. I'm going to write that meter distance. And it's also a measure of spread. Spread. Um, now, more than ever, we're going to rely on our distributions being this bell curve shape. This bell curve shape we call a normal distribution. And we can assume that all data fall somewhat into somewhat of a normal distribution. So say you had heights of people in your class or heights of people around town, um, you can assume most people have an average-ish height. Okay, this is the normal distribution. Okay, in the middle here we have the mean, x bars, the symbol for the mean, the median, and the mode. And we're going to assume the data is symmetrical about this here. Okay, not every data set will be, but it's an assumption we make in this unit. Okay. So when you go and calculate standard deviation, once you follow the instructions, what are you going to get? You're going to get some number. Okay. Symbol for standard deviation is a little sigma x. And standard deviation, let's just say standard deviation is 6. Okay. Your data set where standard deviation six. Let's say the average is going to be, uh, let's say it's ten. Okay. So standard deviation six. Our distance is six. That's great. What's important about this is that the bigger the standard deviation is, the more spread data is. So the more things are spread out a little bit. Um, if I was just to kind of give you another diagram, if I had some some normal distributions, if I let's just draw a few in here. No, it's not very straight. We're always going to assume that for any standard deviation, the pink, the green, the blue here, um, there's always 100% of scores b below that. So if you want, you could think of it as drawing in, you know, columns, three, column graph in, uh, and then you get 100% of scores beneath. We're not so concerned with that um, as just the scores being underneath. So the average in the middle, in this case, is 10, I said. So 10 down the middle, standard deviation is 6. Okay. So that's 10 here. That means this would be say that's going to be 4, that's going to be 16. So 6 here, the distance, one standard deviation above the mean is 16, one standard deviation below the mean is 4. Okay, so 10, take a standard deviation away, it gets you to 4. If you took two standard deviations away, if you're two standard deviations below, that will get you minus 2. Two standard deviations above would take you to 22. What's significant about standard deviation, it's not part of the course, but I think it's really interesting and significant, is that if you have the mean in the middle here, between minus one standard deviation and one standard deviation above and below the mean, 68% of scores lie in that range. Okay, so 68% of scores lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So if I'm looking at test scores, for example, I might have a class and the average might be 70, um, in terms of standard deviations, one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below, 
I can work out where 70% of my students are. So I'll give each student a score based on standard deviations. I'll work out where the student is. Similarly, with two standard deviations, 95% of scores lie within two standard deviations. And with three standard deviations, 99.7% of students lie within three standard deviations of the mean. This is good for just working out how many students we are um, beating or how many st how students doing in a test. So I mean, the classic example is if you have um, two students so we're going to have student who is dying student, uh, let's say student Steve and student named Tom and let's say for they got marks Actually, let's not do students, let's do subjects. So let's go for uh, maths. It's not students anymore. Subjects. And we have maths, course, and science. We want to look at mark the student achieved. We're going to look at the average for the test. We're also going to look at the standard deviation. Okay, so let's say for maths, this student score. Let's say they got a score of eighty, and let's say the um, the average for the test was seventy, and we'll say the standard deviation is five, and we'll say for science, the student got a mark of ninety, the average was seventy-five and the standard deviation is 10. Okay. So given this, let's just say the student's name is Tom. And the classic standard deviation question is, on which test did Tom do better? So did Tom do better on his math or on his science? And our classic response is, He's done better on his science. His mark for science is higher, therefore he's done better on science. Standard deviation says this is not always actually true. Okay, So it's looking at where the center of the data is and how spread the marks are. So, based on the range, we're concerned with how many standard deviations Tom is above the mean in this case. So, I mean, both of his marks, the mean is 70, he got 80 mean 75, he got 90. We talk about, in terms of standard deviation, what the distance is. So between 70 and 80 is 10 marks. 10 marks is two standard deviations. So here, my friend Tom is two standard deviations above the mean. Okay. In science, he's 15 marks above the mean, 75, 85, 90. 15 marks above, that's only one and a half standard deviations above the mean. What this is essentially then telling us is being two standard deviations above the mean, he's beaten more people in maths than he has in science. Even though his maths mark is not so good on the surface, because it's a harder test, the scores are more bunched. Uh, with the scores being more bunched, his two standard deviations above, telling us that he's better in maths than he is in science. And the marks here are nice and spread. In terms of the difference graphically, what's happening? Maths is this big line here. So he's actually quite far up here. He's beaten more people. So the area that's underneath his mark, the maths, this area in here. And that's most of the people. That's most scores. Whereas for science, he's a little bit lower down. For science, he came in at one and a half standard deviations. The area under here, there's actually not as many scores, so he hasn't beaten as many people. In terms of beating people exactly, so here it's two standard deviations above, one and a half standard deviations above. Looking at that in terms of the graph, well, two standard deviations above on my graph here, and that would be here. Okay, and we know between minus two and two standard deviations of the mean is 95% of scores. So if the graph is symmetrical, I should have down this end half the scores. 
percent. On this end, in the blue here, there's this little area here that's exempt. So if the blue is 95 percent, that'll mean each side of the blue is going to be 47 and a half percent. So what's happening here? By the time we get to two standard deviations, 50 percent here. 47.5% here is 97.5%. So in getting his score of two standard deviations above the mean, so his mass mark here, two standard deviations above the mean, means he's beaten, he's beaten 97.5% of the people, 97.5% of the candidates. Okay. Whereas, if he was only one and a half standard deviations above the mean, he would be here. So this is his uh, science mark now. So his science mark is actually beaten less people. There's still more people up here he could have beaten. Okay. So in terms of that, we don't have an exact number for one and a half standard deviations, um, but he has beaten less, given his less standard deviations above the mean. Okay. So the more standard deviations above the mean you are, the better you are doing. And there's a big uh, part of general mass that deals with this. Okay. Taking another example, so that's Tom. Two standard deviations above is the winner. We all want to be as many standard deviations above as we can. If I took another example, uh, let's take, say, that's Tom. This can be, I don't know, James. And we'll do the same thing. James's test scores, subjects. And we'll take the mark, we'll take the mean, and the standard deviation. So let's say, again, well, let's change that, let's go, his subjects can be English and tech. Uh, his marks, he can get a mark of, let's say, uh, 60, and a mark of, let's go with 50 here. If the mean, let's say the mark here, the mean here was 50, and the mean here can be uh, 45. Standard deviation, we'll say, uh, is, I don't know, let's say it is 5 here, and let's say it is, um, let's say it's 3 here. So for James, uh, James has not gone so well as his friend. Tom, looking at the scores, we should be noticing for James, James's marks, well, I mean, they're, actually, they're pretty good actually. His mark is above the mean in both of them. So here, he's 10 marks above the mean. Here, he is uh, 5 marks above the mean. Looking at this, he's 2 standard deviations above the mean. Here, he's 1 point something standard deviations above the mean. It's probably not the best example. Okay, so similar thing going on to Tom here. 10 marks, 2 standard deviations because each standard deviation is 5 marks. Here, 5 marks, each standard deviation is 3. If I came and switched these numbers around though, if I got the example right the first time, which I didn't, let's just change it up a little bit. So for James here, let's say James got a mark of 50 in English and the average was 60. And let's say he got a mark of 55 in tech. Uh, when the average was, uh, let's go, 60 again. James now is below the mean, so James is below average. So if I drew up my normal distribution, average is here, James is over here, he's on this side somewhere. He's just below the mean. Looking at this one, he's 10 marks different, 5 marks per standard deviation, he's 2 standard deviations below. So he's done quite a bit worse in the class. Um, his two standard deviations below. The middle here is zero standard deviations. You'd have one standard deviation below here, two standard deviations below on this side. So he's doing quite poorly. In tech, he's five marks below average. Uh, five marks divided by three is about one and two thirds. He's actually just in here. He's done slightly better in tech. So his tech mark is better in terms of standard deviation. You always want to consider where they are standard deviation wise. Blow them up, 
draw yourself a normal distribution, talk about, well, my normal distribution in here, what's average, average is straight down the middle, are we standard deviations above, so one standard deviation above, two standard deviations above, three standard deviations above, or are we below, one standard deviation below, two standard deviations below, three standard deviations below. This side here is worse than this side here. Okay. Um, I would take note of this property of how many scores are either side because that is, I think, a fairly important example, fairly important concept to get. Um, it's not accessible. Um, what is accessible, though, is who is beating who. If you go into general maths, you will see this. You will get very familiar with this concept even more. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick with our examples of Tom and James. Okay. Like I said, calculating standard deviation, go and do it on the calculator. Download the instructions if you're a student at my school. Uh, otherwise, you need to go online, find your um, calculator provider's instructions, have a read through those. Okay. Uh, I know it's kind of scant. Uh, feel free to ask questions where you can working out that standard deviation. Uh, thanks for watching.